is to let go of comparison or thinking that there's like one right way to do life. Welcome to the One Girl Revolution podcast. Kate Bryan here for another week and another inspiring story. The One Girl Revolution podcast highlights the stories of everyday women who are changing the world through their lives. Please subscribe to the One Girl Revolution podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at One Girl Revo. That's the number one girl, R-E-V-O. We're on YouTube at One Girl Revolution. And you can find all of our social media links, podcast episodes, videos, and so much more on our website at onegirlrevolution.com. That's the number one girl, revolution.com. Today's episode is all about following your spark. It was so inspiring to sit down and talk with today's guest, Gina Casparo. I'll tell you more about her in a minute, but one thing that has been resonating with me since our conversation is how often fear can hold us back from the greatest things in our lives, our hopes, our dreams. And the reality is we are all here for a purpose with a spark that is meant to impact the world, to set the world ablaze. We are meant to set the world ablaze with our lives, with this spark that is within us. So don't let fear hold you back or hinder you. Follow your spark, whatever it is. Take chances, seize the day, find out what drives you, what moves you, what inspires you, and follow that. Follow your spark. Today's guest on the One Girl Revolution podcast is my good friend, Gina Casparo. Gina and I got connected by another dear friend and previous One Girl Revolution podcast guest, Stephanie. She is episode 42, and she's amazing, so go check her episode out, episode 42. Gina was working at Lululemon when we first got connected, but now she's branched out on her own. She's an entrepreneur, a life coach, a feng shui specialist, consultant, and she's embarking on a really inspiring journey across the U.S. called Follow Your Spark. Gina is following her spark, and she'll encourage you to find your spark and do the same. Detroit was Gina's first stop, so I asked her to sit down with me to talk about her life, her inspiring journey that she's embarking on, and so much more. One of the things that inspires me most about Gina, okay, well, it's actually two things. First is she is so selfless and supportive when it comes to her sisters, to the women around her. I can't even begin to count the amount of times that Gina has dropped everything to help me or connect me with someone after I mentioned that I was looking to cover a particular topic or needed help with something. She is so amazing and such an example in that way. And secondly, and a big piece of the Follow Your Spark journey is how she sees people. She wants to walk with them, get to know them, understand them, and she wants to help and heal the world in that way. There is so much emphasis put on the big things that we can do to change the world, but sometimes the smallest things Even just saying hello to someone or getting to know them, we all just want to be known. We all want to be seen. We all want to be loved. So getting to know someone can be just as world-changing as founding an organization or doing something in a big way. Sometimes the small things that we do can have a massive impact. This is a really special episode, and I'm so excited for you to get to know Gina, and I can't wait to share her story, and follow your spark with you. So without further ado, here's Gina. Gina, welcome to the One Girl Revolution podcast. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm so excited to have you in Detroit. I feel like this has been a long time coming, and you and I have known each other for a long time, it feels like. I don't even know if it's been... feels like, but I don't think it's been that long. It hasn't been that long, but it feels like I've just known you for forever, and I'm so excited to have you here in Detroit. We're going to talk about that while you're here what you're doing and all the great work that you do and everything that you're doing and this journey that you're on. But before we get into that, I want to ask you, who is the one girl revolution in your life? Who is a woman or girl that's inspired you? Yes. So there's a lot of women, girls who inspire me, you included. And when I think about someone recent, I think about the the woman who's actually hosting me in Detroit right now. Her name is Emily. And she is inspiring to me because she just 
goes after her passions, whatever they are, doesn't matter if she knows nothing about them. She, you know, taught herself gardening. She's raising quails. She taught herself how to make an incubator and is raising these like quail eggs right now. Taught herself how to butcher a quail for the first time. So just all of these these different things that she was passionate about and followed. And I feel like a lot of people might let it get in the way what they don't know and therefore never pursue what they're curious about or passionate about. And she just goes after it with this like zeal and zest that is really fun to watch and really inspiring to me. Mm, She's following her spark, which I can't wait to talk about that. But (laughs) before we get into what you're doing now and why you're in Detroit and this journey that you're on, I'd love to talk about your life. So if we can rewind for a second and talk about your early life, who you are, where you're from, and just a little bit about your life story. Yeah. So I'm from, I'm Gina again, so happy to be here. And I'm from South Florida. I grew up there with my parents, my sister. And I joke sometimes that, you know, the ocean helped raise me. And my parents took us to the beach every weekend. And that was kind of my first real love of nature. And I always had this like passion and interest for for nature, for mysticism, for shamanism, for the natural world, for dreams. And I kind of say this because it led into some other things later in life. But so I grew up in South Florida. Then I went to college at the University of Florida and ended up studying advertising. And I studied advertising because I was into art and creativity. And I was really interested in how human beings like interacted with and were affected by color and all these different things but I didn't think I was creative enough to be an artist and I was also super interested in psychology and mindset and how that you know impacted our lives and interactions but I didn't think I was smart enough to be a psychologist so I was like oh advertising is this like happy marriage between these two that I like think I'm good enough to do so I studied advertising in college Uh, And then I studied abroad in Australia, came home to Miami, started working in advertising, and kind of quickly realized that wasn't what I was really passionate about, and moved to South Korea to teach English, was there for a year, traveling around. And then when I came home, didn't really know what I was going to do, and a friend of mine was going to this yoga event and was being recruited by someone at Lululemon. And I met that person and she was like, do you need a job? And I was like, I kind of do need a job. And I went home, started researching Lululemon and even the interview process was super interesting and it just seems like a good fit. So I started working at Lululemon and then within six months was like, this isn't a real job. I'm an adult, like I have a college degree this is not good enough. Again, that kind of like comparison or what did other people think or what did I think about myself? So I quit and I went to work at the University of Miami in their study abroad office and quickly realized again, this was not a good fit and went back to Lululemon. Thankfully, they took me back and I really uh, began to understand, you know, with my manager's guidance, how Lululemon could be a career. And one thing that kept me at Lululemon for eight years is their dedication to personal growth and development. And that's really where I got my first taste of coaching, of goal setting, and really fell in love. And eight years later, realized that's what I was most passionate about. And then, you know, decided to take that leap to let go of Lululemon and working in the stores and really focus my career on personal growth development. And that's how I got into coaching. Yeah, you do coaching. You also do feng shui. Can you talk a little bit about some of those other heart projects of yours? I feel like you have so many heart projects and things that you're always working on. Yeah. So coaching, I'm a life coach, life designer coach and a feng shui consultant. And I'm a super type A kind of analytical person, strength finder, like achiever, growth, all those things. If you're familiar with that, And I can get very in my head and kind of too logical and like wrapped up in the how and the to do's and everything else. And one day I followed my spark again and kind of found feng shui. And the more I started learning about feng shui, the more I realized it ties in all these things that I was passionate about. Nature, color, symbolism, how we interacted 
and were impacted by our environment. And it allowed me to get out of that constant doing and achievement kind of mode and get into the being and the more energetic side of things. So it felt like a perfect pair to me to that other work. And again, was ultimately to the same goal of it's another tool to help me, you know, grow and transform and nourish myself in a way that's going to support, you know, my vision for my life. So that's why I integrated that in. And now with my clients, you know, we focus on mindset, lifestyle, and environment, because I really feel like when you tie in all of those layers is when it really becomes a catalyst for transformation. So as a life design coach, I want to ask you, what is the best advice that you've ever gotten? Or is there some glimmer of advice that somebody's given or like some, some motto or mantra that somebody once told you that now you kind of carry with you? Yeah. So I don't know if this is the best advice I've ever gotten, but it's definitely something that stands out really strongly to me. My dad always asked me, like, say I was trying to figure out do I take this leap? Do I move to South Korea? Do I do this? Do I do that? He would always ask me, what's the worst that can happen? You know, if you move to South Korea, what's the worst that can happen? You just, you don't like it, you come home. You leave for this, you know, road trip that I'm on right now, you don't like it, you come home. And just thinking about that eased some of the pressure or fear, you know, that might've been there whenever I was kind of contemplating these big leaps or big life changes and allowed me to move forward with some more ease, just kind of like being at peace with like, nothing terrible is going to happen. I can always make a new choice down the line if I want to make a new choice. I think fear holds us back from so many things in our lives. We're afraid of what could happen instead of just embracing what could happen. Because even for you on this journey, I'm so excited to see what happens because I feel like there are going to be so many great things that happen just because you are willing to take that step, to take that leap. So that's great advice. I think it's great (laughs) advice. One thing that I love about you, Gina, and there are a lot of things that I love about you, but you're so affirming of other women and the amount of times that you've connected me with people or I've told you about like, I'm looking for this person for the podcast or I need this. You're the first person to like jump in and be like, let me connect you with this person. Or I don't know someone, but let me ask this person. And you have such a heart for service and it just touches my heart in such a beautiful way. And I'm so grateful to have you as a friend and excited to share more of your story. But I just wanted to say that because I think it's important for all of us to think about that, to think about our female relationships, our female friendships, and how can we support one another? And I'm excited to have you here in Detroit and connect you with some of my people and pay pay it back because you've been such a gift to me. Thank you. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I was at a personal development thing and we came up with this like purpose statement. And what came to mind then and is still true for me now is that I am here to spark a tidal wave of transformation. And that's really, you know, what you described as part of why that's so important to me, because I feel like every everything that we do impacts somebody else. And, you know, every it just ripples out in waves. So in whatever way that I can do that, I am passionate about doing that. And it's the little things that we do. Sometimes we don't we think, oh, I don't have the money to do something or I don't have the time or what happens again, fear, what happens if I step out and help this person? Are they going to come back and ask me again? But it really is so important for all of us to just do the little things and support one another and look out for our friends and look out for our sisters. So I'm just grateful to have you in my life. And I just wanted to say that, but I want to talk about follow your spark in this journey that you're on right now. Before we get into what the journey is, how did this idea come about? What was the spark, the moment, the suddenly moment that led you to this? Yes. So I said a little bit about this, but there's a lot of things in my life where people like, how did you get into that? How did you get into feng shui? How did you get into taiko drumming? How did you get into this? How did you get into that? And I never really had the right words for it before. I was always like, well, I was just kind of led there. And over the years and the past year specifically, I've realized, you know, kind of put it into the words of following your spark. And to me, that means anything that sparks your curiosity, passion, inspiration. And when you're in 
that state, those like high vibrational states, I feel like that just kind of leads the way towards new opportunities and different things. So to kind of back up to how I came to be here, a year ago, I was looking to purchase a house in Baltimore after my partner and I broke up and was searching for a couple months. And even the houses that were meeting, you know, my top 10 list of requirements or whatever, I didn't want to put a deposit down. And finally was like, maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing right now. So I just paused and decided to go to a place that always sparks my inspiration, which is Barnes and Noble. I'm an avid reader and normally reading 10 books at a time. So I went to Barnes and Noble, was kind of looking in the travel section and was beginning to think about maybe Baltimore isn't where I want to be. Maybe there's somewhere else. And I'm in the travel section and I come across the book To Shake the Sleeping Self by Jedediah Jenkins. And he wrote about his kind of bike quest pilgrimage from Oregon to the tip of Argentina. And I immediately just had this connection to it. And I've always wanted to take some kind of quest or pilgrimage or exploration. And I just got this kind of like hit or download that now was the time to do that. And that's where it started. And over the last 10 months, I've kind of let that idea blossom. But that's kind of where the addition, the, the first initial spark came from. I know that the idea is blossoming and it's going to continue to blossom. But talk to me about this journey that you're on. Detroit is your first stop. But talk to me about what you're doing, where yes. you're going, and just the vision behind your, your tour. Yeah. So I'm on a year-long road trip around the United States. And the intention, the vision um, is to follow, again, follow my spark, follow wherever I'm led, and more specifically to connect with people along the way who are living their lives in a really intentional, authentic way, something that's really true to themselves, and to connect with different people, to learn about different lifestyles, and to share their stories, and to start my own podcast, hopefully in September, to inspire other people to do the same, to live their most authentic life. Because I feel like there's you know, so many times where people might have an idea or have a dream and think for whatever reason, I could never do that, that's impossible, you know, there's all these limitations or whatever, and to encourage people to, to see possibility where they might not have before or to maybe hear a podcast, you know, this conversation and, and someone might have wanted to raise chickens or quills and they hear this and they're inspired. So to, to share stories and hopefully ignite a spark in someone else to follow their purpose and passion wherever that might lead them. I know that there are a lot of different elements to what you're doing. And one of the things that you had mentioned to me is wanting to volunteer. So wanting to volunteer in Detroit at an urban farm. I know you can't plan everything, what you're going to do in each place. And some of it is just going to be following your spark and seeing where the journey leads you. But what are some of those elements of your tr travels in each city that you want to do? Well, the biggest thing is that, you know, connection with people, right? So whatever way that I can elevate the people I'm meeting, whether it's entrepreneurs or, or farmers or people who have some other type of cause or impact in their own communities to connect, to share their stories, if that helps share their mission or to work with them for a day, to learn more about what they do, again, to kind of spread the word about their organization or way of life or whatever they're doing. So Again, for me to just really learn about these different people, these different cultures, these ways of life, and to share that. And I'm planning on woofing somewhere for anyone not familiar with woofing. I can't remember, I'm sorry, the acronym. And it's an organization of farmers that you can volunteer on different farms around the country, learn about agriculture, sustainable living, organic farming, all these different things. So that's, that's one of the things in the next couple of months I'm, I'm working out. I know that I shared with you that my sister did that in Hawaii, of all places. They have it all over all over the yes. world where people can go. And I can't wait to hear, whenever you end up doing that, I can't wait to hear those podcast episodes and everything else that you have coming, because I know we've talked about a couple of the episodes that you're going to be doing, but how has Detroit been? So Detroit is your first stop. 
I obviously love the city of Detroit. And I know before you came, I was telling you all about the things that I loved and who I loved and all the different places that I loved. And I've gotten to give you a little bit of a tour, but totally honest, I won't be offended. (laughs) What has your experience been in Detroit and what kind of is the vibe of Detroit in your opinion? So Detroit reminds me a lot of Baltimore. And when I moved from Miami from South Florida, Baltimore, so many people said, why are you moving to Baltimore? Why would you leave Miami to move to Baltimore? And people have said similar things when I told them my first stop on this trip was Detroit. Why would you go to Detroit? And fun fact, I bought like a Lonely Planet about the US and they had the top 25 places to visit. And I think Detroit was like number 14 and Miami was like 24. So Detroit was on the top 25 list. I'm just gonna throw that out there. And Detroit reminds me a lot of Baltimore in the sense that it's, you know, can get a bad rap. It's kind of this like underdog city. And in both places, I found that it's also a home and a hub for people who really care about this city and care about revitalizing it. And there's tons of creatives and entrepreneurs and and people who are really passionate about community and connection. And I've been welcomed with open arms here by you and and really everyone else that I've met. So it's it's been a wonderful introduction, you know, a couple weeks in the city. And you have a little bit of time left here. So hopefully it'll just can be a continuation of that. And I know you're going to record some podcast episodes. We're going to go to a sports event this Saturday, which is going to be great. It's an Irish one. It's not any <laughs> Detroit sports teams, but it's going to be really cool and entertaining and a different kind of Detroit culture, I think, experience. But where do you go next? And where are some of the places that you're going, places you're excited about, places you're uncertain about? Yeah, so next is either Milwaukee or Madison. Basically, I'm making my way west now from Detroit. So next stops are Milwaukee or or Madison and then St. Paul. So one of my intentions is to go to some of these cities that, you know, might not be the most known, like Chicago, New York kind of thing, but go to some of these other cities that are really loved and, you know, have a community of really passionate people. So those are my first couple stops. Also making my way towards Montana. For some reason, Montana is like a big pull for me and something that I've heard a lot of people just rave about. So I'm hoping to spend some time there and then make a detour to Canada and a retreat at Cortez Island that I'm excited about in September. So I'm going west. So if anyone has any people or places or recommendations that I should check out, definitely pass them along. And I'm going to be asking you at the end of the podcast how people can reach out to you if they have ideas or places they want you to visit or if they're in one of the cities that you're going to be uh, that they can reach out to you and support you or meet up with you or if they have a story to tell all those different things. So we'll talk about that at the end. Um, Yeah, I'm just so excited for you. And I feel like so many actually it's funny because I know numerous women in the past six months that have done some sort of like Stella got her groove back (laughs) journey. And I don't want to degrade what you're doing because I think it's so powerful. And I know so many women that have done that where they've done, you know, a road trip across the country and didn't really have a plan and just were like, okay, I know that my first stop is here. I know that this other place I want to stop at, or I want to go see this and just those experiences. And I know that you could even look back at your own life and thinking about when you were in Korea or other experiences. It's so important for us to have these life experiences and not live in the silo. We all live in our own silo. We're on social media. We surround ourselves with people that agree with us. And I'm so excited to hear all of the stories through your podcast and to hear about your continued journey, because you're really throwing yourself out into the deep. But I just think it's such an inspiration. And I hope that everybody that's listening to this, that they take a lot of things away. First of all, if you have a spark, follow it. Um, But also open your eyes to other things and take a chance. And if you want to experience you, you feel called to go to Montana for whatever reason, go to Montana, like it's not that difficult. Uh, especially now that things are opening back up after COVID and people are kind of going back to normalcy with regards to travel. What do you hope that people get from your story? I hope that that's what people get from you, but what do you hope that people get from your story? Yeah, I really hope 
you know, exactly what you said. I hope that people are inspired to see things differently, see their life differently, see a new perspective and possibility where they might not have seen that before. And instead of kind of being trapped in like the rut of everyday life to let themselves dream and explore and imagine, you know, what could be and just give themselves time and space to reflect and be curious about what life might hold. I know it's hard to look at the future and know what's going to happen, and especially for you, because you've done so many different things. I know you're doing a lot of things and you're continuing your coaching while you're going on this journey. But what do you hope that the future holds for you, Gina? If you could just in your dream of dream world, oh we're gosh. just dreaming, or maybe what do you hope that this where this leads you to if you have any thoughts or ideas? Yeah, you know, I don't. <laughs> and I've been, you know, I've thought a lot about just my intentions for this trip and where I see my business going. And I think one thing the past couple of weeks as I've left, and I just wrote about this today, but giving myself more space and less less control of what I think is going to happen because I think sometimes I have this mantra written on my mirror in my journal that life is unfolding more gloriously than I could ever imagine. And I think sometimes we get attached to life looking one particular way and get so blindsided in that, that, that we miss what's really meant for us. So this year is really my intention is to explore and just let that unfold and be less attached to it looking one particular way. But really, again, kind of going back to my purpose, like what is what I'm most passionate about is sparking transformation for myself and everyone around me. So whatever that looks like, you know, I'm exploring a podcast this year. And as far as, you know, one year or five year vision, I, I don't know. And I am kind of excited about that not knowing and being less attached to having it all spelled out and being more connected to my intention. That was exactly one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast, because I think we oftentimes try to control everything. And I think it's so beautiful what you're doing, how you just have jumped fully in and said, I have this idea, I'm following my spark, I have this spark. And so I hope that it encourages everybody who's listening to do the same. And you know that a big part of this podcast too is giving back. And a lot of times we think about money, like, oh, I don't have money to donate, or I don't have the time to volunteer regularly. But I I have come to realize that giving back oftentimes is just seeing people or listening to people. And that's what you're doing and elevating people around us that sometimes our time or a smile or just noticing someone on the street or you're standing in a coffee mm-hmm. shop, recognizing the humans around us and you never know what that encounter is going to open up. And so I just think it's so incredible what you're doing. And I can't, again, I can't wait to hear (laughs) all the stories and all the experiences. I know you're in the very beginning stages, but that's really powerful to me. And you also hit on one big thing that's important to me. When I thought about this trip, I toyed around with the idea, should I get an RV or a camper van or something else? And it kept coming back to I want to be with people. I want to be with people in their homes. I want to connect with people. My love language is quality time. The whole purpose of this trip or, you know, one of the biggest intentions of this trip is is to connect and share stories. So that's why as I'm traveling, I'm hoping as much as possible to be hosted by people along the way and to spend time just being with people and having meaningful conversations and supporting people like you said through my presence my attention my you know curiosity and to offer my support in whatever way that I can to be of service in whatever way that I can and I think that especially after you know not after COVID's not over but the past couple years that we've had that in-person connection was so important to me. I interviewed somebody earlier today, a podcast interview for a series that I'm working on. And I walked up to the door. I'd never met these amazing women before. And they just opened their arms and gave me a big hug. And I was like, this is just such a beautiful 
moment. And I, you know, I always, I love, I love hugs because I'm the same as you. I like love quality time and I love like people giving me hugs or like physical touch. Um, and it just was such a beautiful moment because I didn't know them and they were just saying like, oh, you know, COVID times, like I just want to hug everybody. And we just all need that time. We, and we just need to be encountered by other people. And the heart of all of us is we just want to be known in this world. We just want to be seen, known, heard, and that's the embodiment of what you're doing. And so I can't wait to see where it goes. And just for people that are listening, you kind of alluded to this, but you're traveling and it's not glamorous. You're just driving your car around (laughs) and sleeping on couch surfing. And you really have, have given your heart. And again, it goes back to what I said to you, I said about you earlier said to you about you earlier is that you really have a heart for for service and I think it's so beautiful that you want to walk with people and live with people and they always say you know if you could walk a mile in someone else's shoes and that's exactly what you're doing yes so if you could get to the root I love this question uh if you could get to the very root of what drives you what moves you what um you know has led you to this journey to where you are now if you could get to the very root of the the flower or the plant or the fire the flame that sits within you what would you say that root is the driving force behind who you are and what you do I was thinking about this a lot and what's coming up for me now is thinking about my core values the things that matter to me most and over the years they've been pretty consistent one of them being exploration and adventure has always just been something that I crave and also growth. And that's what this trip is about. It's about growth. It's about exploration. It's about being fully self-expressed and just pursuing what what lights me up and and being, like I said, fully self-expressed. And that's what that's what's most important to me in life. That's what's most important for myself and what I hope to support other people with through my work as a coach and, you know, a feng shui consultant. So it's really an embodiment of all that. And it just kind of came to this point and catalyst in my life where I had this opportunity to take this leap. And, and ultimately, it's also part of I was just this is what I was led to in this moment. And like I said, what led to me, you know, pursuing feng shui or taiko, or whatever. Sometimes it's just this knowing of like, this is what's next. So it's a combination of that. Just like, this is what I was led to in my life. And it's a really beautiful marriage of all the things that I'm passionate about. Mm, you're just living it out every single day. And I know that's just going to be the embodiment of your journey. If people who are listening want to follow your journey, if they want to meet up with you, if they have an idea again, like if they have an idea of a story you should know about, how can they follow your journey and how can they get in touch with you and how can they get involved? Yes. So the easiest way is to join my email list. That's where I send out the most, you know, updates, insights, kind of behind the scenes, things about the trip that I don't necessarily share other places. And I also, the first thing that you'll get if you join that is something called my top 15 transformational tools to strengthen your vibration. And this goes back to following your spark and that it's not about the doing and the achievement and the planning of everything. It's about what sparks that joy, happiness, curiosity. So it's 15 of my my favorite things that help me cultivate those emotions as well as questions and worksheets to help you reflect on what tools might help you do that. So that's kind of the foundation of it all, what's helped me. So that's what I want to offer people when they become part of that community as well. And you can email me. I'm sure we'll put everything in show notes or wherever you put all the things. (laughs) But my website's ginakesbar.com backslash transformational hyphen tools that's where you'll get access to what I just described. You can also follow me on Instagram at Gina underscore Casbaro. DM me, email me, reach out to me in whatever way you feel inspired. I would love to to hear from you. And I'll put all of those in the show notes so people can easily find it and keep in touch with you. For people that are listening, what can they do in their own communities, in their own lives to follow their spark? Well, like I mentioned, those tools, find practices that help you 
cultivate these positive emotions because I used to think, you know, like I said, I was very achiever oriented, goal setting oriented. I was all about what, what do I have to do and realize that before the doing, how you feel makes is everything. That's what sparks what you're inspired to do. So to spend time on practices, whether it's meditation or journaling or dancing or singing or whatever it is that makes you happy, makes you feel alive, make time for that. Mm. And it seems like such a simple thing. And so often I know for me that it was easy to put that off, that that was not important. I was too busy to make time for X, Y, and Z. But really, I've realized that, you know, I want to spend the same amount of time training my mindset or supporting, you know, myself energetically as if I was training for a marathon, the same way I would train my body in that sense. So dedicating time and space for those practices was, is what is most important to help me follow my spark. And I think will help others do the same. I think that you following your spark, Gina, and you sharing your heart and your story and experiencing all these different things. I can't wait to see what comes from this. I can see you writing a book. I could see you doing all sorts of different things with this experience. And I know it's just going to continue to be transformational and everybody is going to love following it. So again, I will make sure that I tag you and everything and people have easy access to your website and can follow along. Before I let you go, I want to ask you this question. And I always end this podcast. If you listen to this podcast, you know, but I'm so curious what you're going to say. If you could leave women and girls around the world with one message, what would it be? So one thing I would say, and this is still something I have to remind myself of every day, is to let go of comparison or thinking that there's like one right way to do life. And that's part of this trip too, to illuminate all different types of lifestyles and what it looks like for me to follow my spark is going to be different from what it looks like for you. And I, I don't know if it's just women or just me, but it's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. So it doesn't matter. And it just matters what, what lights you up and what feels fulfilling to you. So that is what I would want to remind you of. Gina, you are such a light and I'm so grateful to have you as my friend, my sister and to have you here in Detroit. And I can't wait to see how the rest of your time here goes. And I can't wait to follow (laughs) the rest of your journey. Thank you so much for sharing your story, for sharing your work and for inspiring everybody who's listening to follow their spark. Oh my gosh. Thank you. So great to be with you. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at One Girl Revo. That's the number one girl R E V O. And you can find more information on One Girl Revolution at OneGirlRevolution.com. That's the number one girl revolution.com.